because they're not business or they hate my classes because they're not business. No, but you're here because you want to be so. All right, so my topic, the topic is organic foods. Our guests. I'm just going to make one quick announcement. If you cannot hear, since we did not get a mic from, from AB, why don't you come on up there, seats right up front because we want to yeah. make sure that you guys can hear the great information. Plenty of seats and you can turn your seats uh, to face you. The organic foods, are they healthier? There are a number of questions I'm going to be addressing, and the first one is, what does organic mean? Do we have a definition for organic? There's so many terms out there like natural and sustainable and toxic. And so organic actually does have a definition, uh, at least one that the USDA has put together. And it states that the goal of organic foods and organic farming is to quote, integrate cultural, biological, and mechanical practices that foster the cycling of resources, promote ecological balance, and conserve biodiversity. So that's a definition. Foods that have the label certified organic cannot contain or be produced with any of the following. Chemical additives, <coughs> synthetic pesticides, or genetically engineered substances. But lately, some of these criteria have begun to come into question. If you see a label on something that says it's 100% organic, that means that it has 100% of the ingredients are abiding by those criteria. Something can also be certified as organic if it's 95% organic food, the additional, the other 5% coming from an approved list of additives. Something may be labeled 70% organic. If it has 70% organic ingredients, it can have the label made with organic ingredients. Mm -hmm. And if it has less than 70% organic, well, that's what it says. <laughs> in, uh, or within the list of ingredients, it will tell you which ones are, made, are organic and which ones are not. Why do folks buy organic? Healthier? Because it's healthier. Why else? Sustainability. Sustainability. Well, fortunately, I have a couple things that I'll answer too. <laughs> My understanding is that people buy organic for three reasons. One, for what it doesn't contain, because they believe it doesn't contain pesticide residue. For what it does contain, because they believe that it contains more nutrients. And then for the environmental, environmental benefits. I'm going to spend most of my time addressing the first two, um, and then I will give my suggestions for the third and what we can do going forward. So is organic pesticide free? There's a group that calls themselves the Environmental Working Group every year. They put out their Dirty Dozen and their Clean 15. How many folks have heard of that? Okay. So in 2015, their list included of the Dirty Dozen apples. If you're on their Dirty Dozen list, they'd say you must buy these organic. 
Okay, so let's have a look at what that means. First of all, the Environmental Working Group gets their information from the USDA Pesticide Data Program. And this is a program that randomly tests large varieties of fruits and vegetables every year for pesticide residue. Samples are purchased from across the country. They're washed for 10 seconds, figuring that's the, how average, an average person might rinse something off for 10 seconds. And then they test them for over 200 registered pesticides. Over one and a half million tests were performed on close to 11,000 samples. And only 1.4% of these samples found any pesticide residue. As for the apples, there were 744 samples collected from across the country. They were tested for 194 synthetic pesticides. Almost 141,000 tests were performed and residues were detected in 3,700 cases. Okay, that's not very many. Yes? Do they just test the skin? Because my belief is that when you spray something, just like when you put lotion on your body, like it seeps in and it gets absorbed into the, do they test inside or just? My understanding is that they test the whole fruit. The whole fruit, okay. So what, is all, what do all those numbers mean? Because I just threw a bunch of numbers at you, and what do they mean? Well, first of all, I want you to understand that the presence of a residue does not mean the presence of a risk. It means we should look at it, but presence of residue does not mean presence of risk. And just because it's there doesn't mean it's causing a problem. How many of these tests found residue in excess of the Environmental Protection Agency's maximum tolerance level? And let me tell you how that tolerance level is established. All right, the Environmental Protection Agency tests animals, all right, until they can find the highest level in which there is no adverse event detected. And then they add a hundredfold on top of that to cover humans. And that's the level that the EPA uses when they are testing residues. That's what, that's what they're testing against. So how many of these tests found residue in excess of that maximum tolerance level out of 144,000? Two. Two. Were found to be in excess. Two what? Two of the tests that they performed, of the 140,000 881 tests. Two were found to be in excess of that maximum tolerance level. That's 0.0014% of the tests. Now, I need to explain something that what more people eat conventional foods than organic foods, so synthetic pesticides are the ones that are being tested. Okay, so synthetic pesticides are tested and monitored more often than non-synthetic, or what you might call organic pesticides. <coughs> We don't have data on organic pesticide residues. Now, in 2000, the National Organic Program set up a method by which they were gonna start testing organic pesticides because there are organic pesticides. In 2010, they hadn't really implemented any of their guidelines. In 2013, what they started testing were pesticides that were not on their approved list. I'll come back to that. So right now, we don't have, the government doesn't have any data on organic pesticide residue, so it's really not possible to compare organic produce to conventional produce with respect to pesticide residues. But what about pesticide residues? And like I said, there's a residue. That doesn't, doesn't mean there's risk, but it means there's something we should look at. It's important to test it. And, not, and when they talk about the apples being in the 2015, they're number one that you have to, you know, that you have to buy organic. 98% of the apples did have some pesticide residue. But you see, it's not the frequency of the pesticide residue detection that's important, it's the total amount that you find that's important. And I have these little piggy, piggy banks up here to remind me that this is the analogy I wanna give you about why I have piggy banks and talking about doses. You're given a choice of piggy banks, but are only told the number of coins that each one contains, not their denomination. Wouldn't it be reasonable to just choose the one with the most coins? No, would it be reasonable? I never get that right. <laughs> would it be reasonable to just choose the one with the most coins without asking further questions? 
Wouldn't it make more sense to find out the actual types and number of coins? And that's what's happening, is that yes, there are pesticides, but how much are there? And if we go back to that maximum tolerance level, we'll get back to that. Where my point is that organic is not safer than non-organic produce. It is as safe as organic produce. The important thing is to eat the produce. <laughs> The benefits of eating fruits and vegetables outweigh any risk you might find, any concerns you may have about pesticide <laughs> residue. And, what, and so with respect to residue, yes, there's residue, but the amount is, what did, maybe I have it on here, but 2.5% of the maximum tolerance level. <clears throat> That's not particularly something you should be scared about. Again, the maximum tolerance level the amount that was a set to where in which they did not see any adverse events in animals plus another hundred times was set at the maximum tolerance level. And with respect to the pesticide residue, at what degree was that? Two and a half percent of that maximum tolerance level. You can eat your apples. Thank you. Please eat your apples. <laughs> Now, organic produce may contain natural pesticides. If you recall, the definition of organic means does not contain synthetic pesticides. Can I walk or do you, what do you, okay, because I'm a, a walker. Oh, sure, no problem. Um, it doesn't mean that it doesn't contain organic pesticide. And there are organic pesticides. So natural, natural is one of the things that drives me as a dietitian crazy. What does natural mean? Sharks are natural, I wouldn't swim with them. <laughs> Rope known comes from the Daris plant. It's an organic pesticide that's been linked to Parkinson's disease, just like some synthetic pesticides. Pyrethrins, which come from chrysanthemums, kill insects by attacking their nervous system, and a similar compound which does similar things are produced in a lab. These are organic pyrethrins and rhodonin are organic pesticides. But you know what? Eat your fruits and vegetables. This is not to tell you that there is a risk. This is to tell you that yes, there are organic pesticides, but it's more important to eat your vegetables and fruit. That the benefit that you get from eating those foods far outweighs any risk. And mind you, I haven't seen the data on organic pesticides, but I trust that it is at least as good as the data for conventional pesticides. And I'm not worried about the, the amount of conventional pesticides that are found on food. So the fact that it has pesticide residue doesn't have anything to do with it being toxic which may be something that the environmental working group in their dirty dozen may not lead you to believe. What's safe? Low levels of synthetic pesticides, low levels of organic pesticides, and puppies. Those are safe. What's unsafe? High levels of synthetic pesticides, high levels of organic pesticides, and rattlesnakes. We have to compare the right things. Here we have apples, pears, potatoes, and zucchini. And in each one of these fruits and vegetables, we have amygdalin, formaldehyde, solanin, and something I can't pronounce yet. <laughs> All of these foods have natural chemicals that are toxic to humans they are present in very small amounts, far below any harmful dose. With respect to the pesticide residue found in ap conventional apples, I read one article that said you would have to eat 529 apples in order to reach a toxic level. I think you might have a toxic level of apple, and I've never heard of a toxic level of apple, but I think you would be sick for other reasons if you were eating 529 apples in one sitting. Yes. Oh, in one sitting. That's yes. Over Not over a lifetime. In one sitting. <laughs> I know. Boring. So we have natural pesticide. That's how these plants have evolved to protect themselves against predators. 
Sometimes these pests, sometimes these chemicals are dangerous to humans as well. Sometimes some of the chemicals that are found in plants evolve to be what are called antioxidants that may be helpful. All right, but the idea is that the amounts present, we're not sure. With re well, we know for sure with respect to the toxic ones that you'd have to eat 529 apples in one sitting. Yes. So what if you eat, let's say, two apples a day per year? Is that stay in your system or is your system? Well, we have Did a very good. She, oh, uh, thank you. She wants to know if we ate two apples every day, would it accumulate? Right now, the data doesn't, I haven't seen anything that has any concern that the benefit, no, that the benefit of eating two apples a day outweighs the risk. We have liver, we have kidneys that process these. Now, these aren't heavy metals, right? Heavy metals might accumulate. And another interesting thing about pesticides is that there, some of them are being developed that we don't metabolize because some of the pests out there that they're trying to eliminate have different metabolic systems and so they go right through our system, we excrete them. I'm not standing up for saying use reckless amounts of pesticides. I'm still in favor of saying wash your fruits and vegetables before you eat them. Or at least try to remember to. Okay. But what I'm saying is that in the amounts present, it's better to eat them than avoid them. Other questions? Just because a chemical is present does not mean it is harmful in the amount present. Something that my students will be very sick and tired of me saying before the end of the semester. It's the dose that makes the poison. And that's what I ask you to remember. So I think it's a fair question. If I'm eating this every day, is it going to accumulate? Right now, from my research, no. Questions about pesticides? Because that's why a lot, that's one reason why people choose organic. Again, eat your fruits and vegetables. Whether you choose them to be organic or not, I'm asking you not to be concerned about the pesticide residue. Is it more nutritious? Are there more nutrients found in organic versus conventional? This is a very confusing and it kind of is, makes you a little bit crazy topic because you see all kinds of different headlines. The LA Times, organic foods are more nutrition according to a review of 343 studies. NPR, why organic food not may, be, may not be healthier for you. Oh my God, what am I gonna do? First of all, just remember to eat them. That's the first thing. So let me just briefly go over where they get their information from because I can. What they're doing is reviewing what's called a systematic, they're looking at meta-analyses or a systematic review, which looks at groups of studies. Let me see what else I have here. So a systematic review is a scientific study that examines the agreement between many clinical trials. You may have one study that showed toxic amounts of residue in this batch of food. And if that's the only study you're looking at, you may never eat that food again. But then when you look at six other studies that say the methodology was poor, the foods were picked at a certain time, whatever, when that gets averaged out, the number goes down. A systematic review looks at a number of studies. That's it like what that says. Instead of looking at a single study, it looks at many studies on a single topic, hopefully giving you a more accurate answer. And I have in smaller print here. <laughs> Generally considered to be one of the highest standards of evidence, however, because there always is a but. Not always perfect and it's subject to the quality of the contributing studies. If the studies going into the systematic analysis are garbage, then the results coming out are garbage. It's called GIGO, garbage in, garbage out. So you not only, you can't basically, you have to be your own reference person. You have to go beyond what the headline says. You want to look at what, where they got their information from. And depending on how far you want to go, you want to look at what the studies were. And that's a lot. That's really hard, I know. But that's where a lot of these headlines are coming from. That's where the information on the nutrition 
of organic versus conventional foods are coming from, from these systematic analyses. So there was a Stanford study that said there was little evidence of health benefit from organic foods. And then somebody else reanalyzed it and said there was a benefit, that organic apples had 6% more vitamin C than conventional apples. So for a recommended daily intake to get your vitamin C, it would be 5.3 organic apples versus 5.6 conventional apples that much of a difference. But see, the thing is, I can tell you, we don't recommend apples as a source of vitamin C. So organic apples, apples that have been grown in an organic fashion, may have more vitamin C, but in a practical sense, I would not want you to look at apples as your source of vitamin C. There are other vegetables and fruits that have much higher amounts. So this, this is true, okay? Organic apples do have more vitamin C, but practically, how is that useful? If indeed that's what you want to use to make your choice of organic food, then that's fine, as long as you have the information. Then there were a bunch of headlines about how research found organic milk gave us more omega-3 fatty acids. Organic production enhances milk nutritional status by changing the fatty acid composition. Does anybody know anything about omega-3 fatty acids? What have you heard about? They're, they're healthy. That they're healthy. That they may reduce cholesterol. What else do folks know about omega-3s? Yes. Anti-inflammatory. They may be anti-inflammatory. They may reduce inflammation. Okay. And organic milk is higher in omega-3 fatty acids than conventional milk. And that's the headline. Let's look at a real world comparison though. <laughs> milk organic and conventional is not what, as a dietitian, I recommend people use to get their, their omega-3s. In order to get the, oh wait, I think I have it. You would need to drink 11 quarts of organic full fat milk to get the same amount of omega-3 fatty acids as you get in four ounces of salmon. So yes, it's true. Organic milk has more omega-3 fatty acids than conventional milk. As a registered dietitian, I do not recommend milk as a source of omega-3 fatty acids. <coughs> do you see what's happening? We're looking at some of the data, but not the whole picture. We're picking pieces and making those headlines. Whether it's conventional produce or organic produce, the nutrients will depend on a number of things, the variety, that you're, of the food that you're eating. The different, different types of apples may have different nutrients, different oranges grown in different parts of the country, the quality of the soil, the fertilizers that are used, crop rotations, maturity at harvest, transportation. How long, whoops, something was on the road before it got to you. All of those affect the nutrient content of both organic and conventional produce. Questions? Yes? Does organic only contain two pesticides versus fertilizers? Does organic only contain pesticides? You know, they're only okay. talking about pesticides versus fertilizers. <coughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yes? Uh, what about meats? I mean, uh, I often heard that, for instance, the grass fed beef is much healthier and, uh, uh, I don't know, less harmful than regular. Non Healthier in terms of what? Uh, nutrients, basically. Well, again, the study, there, the study that had the omega-3s was also true for, uh, in milk was also true for meat. Okay. But meat is not something we recommend as a source of omega-3s. Okay. So, I, I don't know. I mean, there was information, there were also concerns about some other things, but I'm not, I, not concerned about them. So if you if you could be more specific. You know, I was just thinking in general whether, you know, the, the kind of pasture or the kind of, uh, you know, food that animals get, you mm -hmm. know, actually affect uh, the, the uh, you know, how uh, it probably does. Are, yeah. It probably does. Although, <coughs> well, well it, it, in the one respect, the grass fed versus the uh, corn fed is the one of the reasons why they were higher in omega threes. Mm. But again, meat, beef is not a source that I recommend for omega-3s. Okay. 
I'm just curious. What sure. Your opinion is on this. Um, I find that organic dairy seems to be creamier or taste better than conventional. Or I mean, is there some something to that? Or is oh, it uh, I have no idea. <laughs> I, I don't know. Yeah. And but see, what you're saying that to me that comes into why do people should should you buy organic? I, because you like the way it tastes. Yeah. Like, and I don't know if that just means deceiving myself. Or is that I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's like you have to do a blind test. Yeah. Yes. Oh, she wanted to know. Well, I forgot your question. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just that the organic dairy seems to be creamier or tasty. So organic dairy seems to have a better mouthfeel, a, a, a better texture. Um, is it a fuller fat than non-organic? Non-organic than conventional? Yeah, not always. Okay, so yeah, I don't know why. Yeah. Okay. Yes. The growth hormone issue that's in milk. Okay, that's a very good question. There's a concern about growth hormone and antibiotics, yeah. right? Uh, okay, first of all, let me address the antibiotic question because it's closer in my head. No milk has antibiotics in it. Milk is antibiotic free. As milk is being taken to the community tank, all the area dairy farmers put their milk in a large tank. If any antibiotics are found, the entire tank is tossed. Does the same go for yogurt? I don't know. I don't know. Um, and so all the area farmers lose out if one farmer puts a cow back in the herd before the antibiotics have left its system. So there is one, I've heard one particular dairy that's saying our cows never have had antibiotics. What that means is that when their cows get sick, they are taken out of the herd and never put back in. With respect to growth hormone, what I understand about growth hormone is that in terms of residue or what we're, we consume, if we are consuming any, what you need to know is that growth hormone is a protein. And growth hormone gets broken down when we digest it into individual amino acids, just like any other protein. So it's not like a hormone that's, say, a steroid hormone that has to be injected. Growth hormone is a protein hormone that gets broken down like any other uh, protein. So for example, any growth hormone that might be found in dairy products would be broken down during the pasteurization process because it's heated, so it's broken down. So there's no amounts of growth hormone that folks should worry about. The amounts that are present are, are not different from what are produced by the animal naturally. And actually, I saved a, a yogurt container. I keep meaning to take it to class from Trader Joe's for one of their little organic yogurts that say there's no study that shows that RBST in our yogurt is any different, uh, has any effect on milk than conventional. But they still charge for it. Yes? Why don't non-organic foods advertise themselves as being the same or no, no significant amount? Why don't non-organic foods advertise themselves as being as good as organic? Well, I guess it costs money. And I think that I don't, and I, I, that's my way of saying I have no idea. I mean, would you buy it? The thing is, would you buy it if it said we're as good as organic? You know, it's like me thinks that does protest too much. It makes me feel better. <laughs> and, that, and that's unfortunate because that means that there's an industry out there whose marketing program has made us think that conventional vegetables and fruits are less. Because it's about marketing. Other questions? These are very good. Is organic more environmentally friendly? I have to tell you, this is where I have to step back and say, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I do know that they practice certain methods that, uh, let me backtrack, I do know that small farms, whether they're organic or conventional, are able to practice methods such as integrated pest management and incorporate non uh, methods that aren't used on large farms. But larger organic farms and larger conventional farms have to employ similar methods because they have pests, because they have fungus. So I don't know in terms of the environment which is better. Yes. That's interesting. My son gave me a book once because I thought free-range eggs, ro roaming, 
and it was I, I couldn't eat for a while afterwards. I, there's no sign, there's no similar definition for free range. So for example, free range cattle, the definition, or cows, it just means they have to be outside 120 days of the year. 120 days out of 365. Now mind you, for some cows that are, you know, in, in Montana or something, they may like being inside, I don't know. But the, there's no guidelines. But is there any comparison between a conventional egg and an organic egg? In terms of? In terms of? Nutrition and, and oh, um, I think that some of the organic eggs may have more omega-3s because they're being fed different. Again, eggs are not what we consider a source of omega-3s, but yeah, they may have more omega-3 fatty acids. Some so people might- other things like protein or- I'd have to look at the label. I have to, I'd have to look at the difference. Now understand that an, an, an organic egg could say it contains 50% more protein. And let's say that a conventional egg, I'm making these numbers up, has four grams of protein and a, an organic egg has six. That's 50% more. That's still six grams of protein. So, you know, sometimes looking at percentages don't really help us. It's better to look at the actual numbers. When, for example, organic milk has 50% more omega-3s than conventional milk, uh, conventional milk has 1% of the recommendation of omega-3s, organic milk has 1.5%, or maybe it was two versus three. That is 50% more, but that's still not very much. So I don't know. I, I don't know about, about what different um, farms do and what free range means. My cousin has chickens, though. I understand they can be really nasty, but she loves them, <laughs> and we love the eggs. Um, I, I know that um, free range, so you say free range doesn't have a specific definition, but I, thought, I think um, for chicken, it doesn't pasture have a very specific, I, I thought I had read that pasture has a very specific um, So does pasture have a specific meaning with respect to being an organic <laughs> egg? Um, I, can, I don't know what well, I can tell you. And I, your question was, I, I didn't. It's just really comparing like, a, a chicken in a coop with its neck sticking out, right. eating, you know, I don't know what they're eating, right. and you're eating their eggs versus an organic egg. I would okay, so what we're talking egg about egg are, are the treatment of the chickens in organic I versus treatment, conventional. Treatment, but like just the quality of what they're eating. Yes, I don't know. I don't know that the quality is different. Yeah, I, I, I'd be honest. I don't know about the quality of the food of free range versus Aged. Um, the same with free range animals, you know, beef. I don't know the diff I don't know. <laughs> and and with respect to envir environmental, that's where I say I don't know. I'm not a soil scientist, I don't know the answer to those questions. I'm a dietitian and I've looked at the, the nutritional impact. But what I can suggest to you that with respect to those questions, perhaps what you want to do. Well, should you buy low <coughs> organic? That is your decision. I would make that decision for you. I would say that the main, if you have interest in environmental effects, that that's what you need to research. Research it carefully, because remember, the organic industry has a great marketing strategy. That doesn't mean that they're giving you false information, but I'm asking you to try to be balanced. But you also have to live with your decisions. And also, if you find that, for example, organic milk tastes better, to me, that's the best reason, and that's not something we can tell. We can't taste that. I used to think that organic carrots were better than conventional carrots, then I realized what I really liked were the big carrots, not just not the little ones. <laughs> <laughs> so should you buy organic, that's something that, you know, based on what your particular interests and needs are, where your ethics and concerns lie, whether or not you buy. I'm hoping that you're also using some of the data and the information that I give you to help you as you make your decisions. So, but what can you do when you're looking at all of these questions? Perhaps buy local, because then you can go up to that person and ask them, do you use pesticides? Do you use synthetic? Do you use organic? What is the effect? How long were they grown? How do, where do these eggs come from? Have they ever been tested for nutrition? Do you know the benefit versus the risk of the way they're being kept versus the produce that they're giving you? So that would be my suggestion if you have concerns.
I was there. Oh. Yes. So what along the process of making an organic, you know, apple costs so much money? So what along the process of making an organic <coughs> apple costs a lot more money? They can get away with it. It's marketing. Now it may be that with respect to because they don't use certain whatever, that more people are out there picking things, taking bugs off, putting soil around trees. And what's interesting is when we think about that, let's think about the people and how they're being treated. If, if you want to go global on how we make the choices we make. Because then those folks also have to get fed and get paid, but then hopefully they are, and that's part of the reason why it costs more. <coughs> but do you like the way they taste? Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm still looking for a wine sap apple in New England. They only had them in Harrisburg. Other questions? Did anybody hear anything they weren't expecting? Was that okay? Yeah. Science isn't as exciting as... We, we, we don't have... We aren't out there selling it. Like... <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank I appreciate you. your time. Thank you. I learned more. I always love to hear more information about these things. It's pretty interesting stuff. So I'm going to ask for a show of hands a little more than Lily ended. How many people were surprised by what they heard? Me too. How many are relieved? <laughs> I'm doing what I'm doing. Well, thank you for coming today. Uh, keep an eye on our additional offerings for uh, Healthy You. We have them posted on the website, so uh, for the Boston College Healthy You website. Uh, if any of you are uh, looking to participate in the walk across campus, just as a reminder, you want to sign up by the end of this week for it. And uh, the directions for that are also on the Healthy You website. Uh, when you click on um, you just Google Boston College Healthy You. It'll come right up. And there's five tabs across the top. The fifth one says WAC for Walk Across Campus. So you can click on that for any more information on that. And hopefully we'll see you at our next Lunch and Learn. Can I just one more thing? If some of you come across articles or something that contradict or add to what I have to say, the thing about science is as we get new information, we make changes. So if you have something, please, you know, get it to me. Okay. Thank you. And to get it to her, you can get it to me, I'll forward it to her.